Jaffa. Now the world's a hotbed of archaeological mystery and perhaps one of the greatest ones is Australia's Murray-Darling River system. It stretches across a lot of the continent but attached to it is a system of sand dune lunettes. They're round and they're up to a hundred meters high and in one of them in particular Lake Victoria are buried the bodies up to 15,000 Aborigines. Now most archaeologists believe it's a burial ground that extended across thousands of years. I believe it's the aftermath of a vast geophysical destruction and it happened very quickly. But what caused it and when did it occur? Come with me, we're going to find out. Southeastern Australia, down to the Murray Darling River system and Lake Victoria, a huge lunette. But across the beach was revealed a carpet of bones, partially buried and fossilised. They spread over many, many kilometres. Aboriginal mythology and tradition is all about cosmological warfare in the plasma of space. Comets are mentioned, meteorites falling from the heavens and killing people, planets disturbed in their motion, tsunamis sweeping across the land, huge hurricanes, huge destructive thunderbolts from the god, plasma formations in the sky, mountain building, river building, all recorded in oral traditions, handed down impeccably from generation to generation. And this is where the white myth interpreters get it very badly wrong. To the Aboriginal people, these events actually happened. They're not representations, they're not symbolic, they actually occurred. Malkara the wise man told the Barkindji that soon something very dangerous would happen. They had to move. They could see the sky was lit up, but there was no moon. They were terribly scared. Then they heard this rumbling noise from the sky, like thunder. And as it came down close, there were red streaks, and a great big ball of fire came down. And there was smoke. And where it fell, many of them died. Many got burnt because there was fire within its belly. Here we are in Australia at Lake Mungo. We're at the centre of bitter archaeological controversy. And it's all about these bones. Are they the same as the modern indigenous people? Or are they from a totally different race? This is where the controversy began. There was a dramatic event to explain all this extinction. It was the Lake Mungo magnetic reversal. We do have very strong evidence now from um, research being done in modern plasma physics that around the world were witnessed auroras which were thousands of times more powerful than present day aurora. Amongst the early Aboriginal tribes, great fear was held of the Southern Lights, Aurora Australis. And the gang though close to camera thought it signified that at some great distance, a number of blacks were being slaughtered. The Kuanai of the Gippsland region would shout such words as, send it away, do not let it burn us up. The shapes that they carved into the rock resembled the shapes you're seeing in these plasma discharges in laboratories. Yes, and the interesting thing is that um, as this high energy discharge takes place in the laboratory, the, the shape changes over time. Right. Very quickly in the laboratory, but if you uh, consider something on the scale of the Earth uh, or an aurora, uh, it 
takes place over a more extended period of time. You believe it carves out these craters and you have some evidence of that sort of effect? Yes, well, one of the features of uh, electrical scarring is that it can form either sinuous patterns mm -hmm. or it can form circular craters. So what caused this magnetic reversal at Lake Mungo? Was it a comet, a mass coronal ejection or perhaps a chaotic solar system? I talked to Ted Bryan from Wollongong University and he had some very interesting information on Rick Firestone's theories on the demise of the Clovis Indian and the megafauna in North America. Is there some parallels with Lake Mungo and Lake Victoria? Firestone believes that a large one came in and hit the Laurentian ice sheet, but he can find uh, across North America it wiped out the Clovis Indian culture, which was developed at the time. It just terminated. Yeah. And he thinks it wiped it out. Uh, he also finds other physical evidence. He, he finds this, what's, what he calls a, a, a black mat. What's this carbonaceous material you mentioned? <laughs> what sort of stuff is it roughly? It's, it's a, a black clay with what I would know as rotting down vegetable matter. Precisely at the termination of the Clovis Indian culture and the extinction of the megafauna, the Carolina Bay's lunette system was formed in North America. This is very similar to the Murray-Darling lunette system. Some catastrophic event occurred in this carbonaceous layer. Is it the same event that caused the formation of the sand dune lunettes, the death of the megafauna, and the extermination of so many Aborigines? We don't know, but very few apart from Rick Firestone and Ted Bryan have explained this sort of phenomena that exists in Australia. Darwin's theory of slow evolution by natural selection is no longer viable. Instead, catastrophic evolution occurs. We see the sudden and total death of megafauna such as the mammoth or the giant kangaroos suddenly being supplanted by smaller species. I believe this is an adaption of the DNA to new electromagnetic environments. Small kangaroos take over from large kangaroos and all of a sudden a new species has evolved. Under the influence of an extreme coronal mass ejection, a comet, a meteor, a planet in disturbed motion, or even an exploding nebula from outside the solar system, the electromagnetic spectrum reverts to chaos. It forms a new harmonic. The DNA instantly reacts to this extreme provocation. It intelligently but miraculously adapts to this spectrum of extreme celestial chaos. In a process called polyploidy, if the provocation is extreme enough, the DNA instantly creates a new species. Darwin got it wrong. It's not natural selection. It's the intelligent process of polyploidy that creates new species. This means that the megafauna's extinction was followed by the creation of new Australian fauna. It could also explain the divergence of the Australian Aborigine. We need to re-examine our ideas on archaeology and take into account these destructions which I am sure have occurred to the Aboriginal nation as well.